Greetings, this is Doc Ock coming at you live and direct tonight from Black Facts Headquarters Central here in Kent, Ohio, bringing you the best from the north, south, east, and the west. This is not a test. Tonight, we'll be bringing you some of our scary stories. I know you thought we didn't have any, but we do. And we started one the other night. We didn't get to finish it last night. We had a pretty rough day out there at the uh, Kent State Black Alumni Tailgate Party. Uh, yeah, breathing all that smoke and being able to and talking at the same time did not exactly go over very well with my throat. So I had to take a break last night, but I hope you enjoyed the playlist. We called it Our Scary Stories, the same as the title of this uh, these next 25 or 28 selections we'll be doing throughout the end of the month. So uh, sit back and uh, enjoy, relax. But before you do that, we've got a little flavor we need to ask you to do. Go ahead, give us a like if you're looking on Facebook, a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube, and then go ahead and spread the word far and wide as to what Black Facts is doing right here. Because we're here to give you a good ride. We are definitely not trying to hide. Meanwhile, proverb for today is, It's okay to be scared as long as you can rise above your scariness. Grab it by the nape of the neck. And shake it real good. That's right. You got to overcome all those things that you are scared of, scared by, that are just really, really scary in life. And as you will see tonight, there are some things out there that will scare the bejesus out of you. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and continue on with our story that we started the other night about Soldier Jack. Okay, now let's see if we can get the story started. We said we were doing Soldier Jack. I left off the other day. I was extremely sleepy. So I'm going to reread part of this and we'll see if we can finish the story of Soldier Jack. So let's see, where were we at? Okay. Well, now, just before. Jack left the army, his parents had passed away. So Jack knew that his brothers, Tom and Will, were still at home. So he was going home. He said to the sergeant, Sergeant, I've been in the army long enough. I think I'd like to get out. Sergeant said, it's okay with me. Just a minute. He turned around, picked up a piece of paper, and handed Jack a pencil. Jack said, what do I do with this? The sergeant said, erase your name. Jack erased. J-A-C-K. Jack said, what does that mean? It means you're out of the army. Jack said, well, thank you. I'll be going now. The sergeant said, wait a minute. We have to help you on your way. Here's a new suit. Put it on. And we're giving you two loaves of bread. Oh, Jack said, I want this suit. It's a fine suit. But why don't you keep them loaves of bread? No, the sergeant said, this here is what we give you when we don't pay no money. This will help you till you find your own bread. Oh, Jack said, well, Okay, he put them two loaves of bread under his arm and started home. And he walked 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 and he walked. Well, Jack was getting mighty tired of all this walking. He was knowing 
that his home was way up in the hills. And he had a long, long walk to go. But then, just as he was headed toward the hills, he happened to see a man standing beneath a tree. This man had a piece of wood in his hand and a pocket knife. He was standing there working on that piece of wood. Jack came up to him and said, Howdy do. The man said, Howdy, Jack. He seemed to know Jack. Jack said, What you doing? The man said, I'm whittling on a piece of wood. Jack said, <laughs> Oh, that's nice. And the man said, What are you doing? Well, I just got out of the army, Jack said. I'm on my way home, but I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I got two brothers up there, and they're pretty lazy. I was thinking if I go there, that'll be three of us. That ain't no good. Maybe I got to find me another home somewhere. The old man said, what's that you got there beneath your arm? So Jack had to look. <laughs> Jack said, that's my loaf of bread. They give me that they give me in the army. The old man said, son, I'm kind of hungry. Do you think you can give me some of that bread? Oh, Jack said, I'll do better than that. I'll give you the whole loaf. It's just going to get sweaty up under here, up under my arm if I keep carrying it. So, he handed the old man a loaf of bread. The man said, you know, it ain't many people that would part with a whole loaf of bread. The man said, I appreciate that, Jack. Now I'm going to give you something. Jack said, no, that's all right. Mm. <laughs> You don't have to give me nothing. Why don't you want to take what I give you? Because it would be something else to carry. The old man said, don't you worry about that. I'll show you something. And he opened his coat. He had on a real fine pair of galluses. Now, around one of his gallus buttons, he had a string. And on that string, he hung a sack. He unwound that string from his gallus button, took the sack, and he said, watch this. He opened the sack, beat on the side of it two times, and he said, wickety whack, get into my sack. And that loaf of bread just lifted up in the air and dropped down to the bottom of the sack. Woo-wee, that's a magic sack, Jack said. And the man said, <laughs> yes, it is. All you have to do is say the magic words and beat on the side of the sack. Whatever you want to catch will jump right into it. <laughs> Jack said, I think I'm going to keep that. And Jack took the sack, pulled that string tight, wrapped it around his own gallows button, and said goodbye to the old man. And went on his way. Soon. It was very late in the evening. Jack had walked a long way, and he was tired again. But he came up on another fella standing beneath a tree, leaning on a walking cane. And Jack said, how you doing? The man said, how do you do, Jack? He seemed to know Jack. And Jack said, what are you doing? The man said, I'm leaning on my walking cane. Oh, Jack said, well, I'm on my way home, but I don't think I'm going to find my home tonight. The man said, well, before you leave here, tell me what you got there beneath your arm. Jack said, it's a loaf of sweaty bread. The man said, do you think you can pick around in there and find me a dry slice or two? The man said, you know what? I pegged the, oh, he said, I'll do better than that, Jack said. 
I'm going to give you the whole loaf of bread. The man said, you know what? I pegged you as a fine fellow, he said. I appreciate this. It ain't many folks that would give up their bread like that. Well, Jack said, I'm glad I could do it for you. It's just something I won't have to carry. The man said, I want to pay you back for it. No, that's all right. I don't want nothing. The man said, I want to give you something. Jack said, here we go again. Okay, what is it? The man reached way down deep into his pocket and pulled out a little old flat, narrow glass. He hand, handed it to Jack. Jack turned it over, then looked it up, looked up, turned it over. Jack looked up in it, and he looked down at it, and then he said, it ain't made for drinking, is it? Oh, no, the, woman, the man said. All you do is pour fresh spring water down into this glass and look at it, and you can see the death angel anywhere it stands. Ooh, ooh. Jack said, why would I want to see the death angel? And the man said, you never know. You never know. Jack said, you give it to me. I'm going to keep it. So Jack put the glass in his pocket, said goodbye to the old man, and he went on his way. When he rounded a curve in the road, he saw a boarding house. Wow, and I thought I was near the end of this story, but apparently this story goes on for quite some time before she gets finished. I'll have to come back here. And read some more on another day. Because we have gone over our time. It's time for me to skedaddle. That's right. We're going to end this battle with the book. And hopefully tomorrow everything will be set just right. We got everything back together again, ready to go. Meanwhile, you know what you need to do. All you liquor ones out there, it's time for you to take your liquor head, lay it on your liquor pillow, on your liquor bed. Close those yeah, yeah eyes while you wait on that sun to rise. And when you feel those sunbeams beaming down on your eyes, you'll know that it's time for you to rise and shine, oh, chillin' the mind. And in the meantime, all you adults out there can go ahead and start making those donations. Find my profile picture. You see all the coins up under it? Click on it, and it'll take you straight to a link where you can make your monthly donation. That's what we're trying to establish, that we have monthly donations coming in. So we're going to be asking for donations at the beginning of each month. So go for it. Hook us up. Help us out so we can keep doing what we're doing and help you be do what you're doing even better than you're doing it now. I put it that way. Help you do what you're do already doing, but just do it better. Because you'll know more about situations that you're getting into, and you'll have some other frames of references so you can look at things from even more perspectives than you already do. Meanwhile, we're going to say goodnight to Jeff Perry. We see you out there. Aisha Callahan, thanks for alerting me to the fact that we were having some technical difficulties. We did realize that. We just had to figure out a way to deal with it. Najib Abdul Haq. Okay. Good to see you there. See if we see anybody else. Nope. Looks like that's it. That's it for tonight. Oh, no, nope, that's it. That's Najib again. Yeah. All right. So we're going on to our extra and out. So peace out without a doubt. We'll be black tomorrow at noon with our new series which is called Homecoming. And we'll be reading about Norma Marceray, one of the first black graduates of Kent State University. So we're going to be hearing her story of life at Kent and life in general for a black person in Northeast Ohio because she lived in Kent, Akron, and Canton, Ohio. Very familiar with all three areas of Northeast Ohio. Meanwhile, do it in style and try not to rile. 
We'll be black tomorrow at noon. Peace out until then.